one of them, Jesus said, pray that your flight be not, be not on the Sabbath. And that was like Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. And the troops were going to be all around the city of Jerusalem. And did that happen? Oh, yes, it did. It did happen. And the, the, history, the historians tell us that even though that happened, the Christians had already seen when the Roman troops came around the city of Jerusalem, they got out. And when they got out, they were, everybody's going, what do you mean you're selling your stuff? You're leaving with all your, your stuff? But, you know, the, and then, the, guess what? The Romans went away. And everybody said, hmm, those crazy Christians, they all left. They all left because Jesus said, you know, that this was going to happen and pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. And they all left. But guess what? The Romans came back. The Christians didn't come back, but the ones who believed, the ones who believed the word of Jesus, they didn't come back. And so they were saved. They were, they, they did not get destroyed. And you know the temple got destroyed? Remember? Jesus said not one stone will be left upon another, and it was covered with gold. And when they were supposed to save the temple, but somebody shot a, an arrow into that, and the wood burned, and the gold melted, and the gold went between the cracks of the blo big blocks that were making the temple. And the uh, soldiers, of course, how do they get paid with the spoil, with the gold? They took whatever kind of prying things they had, and they pried the rocks together. <sighs> rocks are falling down. Uh -huh. Give them sheets of melted gold, like uh, aluminum foil or something, you know, but it's a gold foil. Get some more, get some more, until there wasn't a stone left in the whole temple. Just like Jesus said, every stone will be turned over. And you know this, but what an amazing thing, huh? So they got out because they believed Jesus. All who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors just as God did after creating the world. This has to do with what do we think we have to do to be saved? Anybody got an answer? What do we have to do to be saved? Believe. Believe. Be faith. Enter into his rest. So when we believe by faith that Jesus has done everything necessary for our salvation, what are we going to, what works are we going to add to it? None. There's not one extra uh, piece of thread that we're going to weave into that wonderful work that Jesus has done, is there? You know, somebody gives you a wonderful tapestry and, and you say, well, that's a really nice work there. But just a second, I'm going to get out my embroidery thing and I'm, I'm just going to add this little thing to it. Oh my goodness. If Jesus' work is perfect and it's complete, there's nothing we can add to it, is there? Was God's work perfect and complete at the seventh day? Yeah. And he stood back and he wasn't tired. He was satisfied. He was just happy. He was done. He's looking around and enjoying that rest. And the first thing that Adam and Eve were created on which day? Six. Sixth day. First thing they did when they woke up is got busy in the garden, right? They got out their shovels and they had to... No. no? What's the first thing Adam and Eve did when they woke up on Saturday and then the night went by? And right. Actually, the sun went down, that's when it started. So they were created on the sixth day, their first evening. They were at rest. God probably showed them around the garden on the seventh day and said, I made this for you. It's all finished. I made this for you. And Eden, even the name Eden is the word delight. It was a delight for him to show them all that. So his God was delighted to show them, and they were delighted to receive it. And then he said, I'm going to give you the job of tending this garden, your home, and I want you to stay here. I've given this to you. So when they took some little vines and went like this and it, it's growing all by itself and now they've got a roof. Was that work? It was like that fun thing we we're talking about. They were resting in being at their home that God gave them the delight. And there is a thought that this uh, garden 
you know, they put the angels in front of it to guard it. And it was taken up into heaven. And one day, it's the only part of earth that didn't get the curse. It's the only part of earth that didn't get the curse because that garden was removed from the planet. We, you're not going to go over any place where those rivers are described in Genesis and find the garden of Eden. <clears throat> if it had been there, people would have found it, right? We have spirit prophecy tells us God took it up. And it's there. It's the only part of earth that God created so perfectly that has not been touched by the curse. And so, what does that mean? That means God has something planned for us in the future, but he has this wonderful rest planned for us right now that we can trust in Jesus. We can trust in God that he's done everything he wants to do. Now, how do you and I know that we're resting? How do we know that we're not trusting in something we're doing? Well, the very next scripture, which people memorize this one all the time, but they don't always put it in context of the Sabbath. They don't always put it in context of the rest. It says, for the word of God, why don't you read this one with me? For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the two, sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. I want you to think about that. The Word of God, when you read it, it, it exposes your innermost thoughts and desires. So God knows whether you're trusting in something you're doing, stacking it up, adding a little embroidery to His plan. He knows, or whether you're just going, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. I, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And if that's your confession, you know God has read your innermost thoughts and desires. Make that your confession frequently, that you're just depending on what Jesus did for your salvation. Then it says, notice this, Bring, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Is this a fight? Do we have a fight going on in the, in the planet today? Are, it, is our carnal nature pulling against us and our of all leaving? Are we challenged? Well, we have the victory because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments at every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And here's where our believing comes in. This is a victory verse. I hope you remember it. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So if doubts come in, somebody said, doubt your doubts. Can you say that? If doubts come in, doubt your doubts. Believe what Jesus has done is more than sufficient. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. And he said, I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So we're going to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ because we're going to cast down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God has done something perfect, and that's what we're going to receive. Whoops. Okay, remember we just read this? This is verse 13. We're almost done. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. This is in the chapter about chapter 3. They were unbelievers. They were disobedient. Chapter 4, God says, I still have something. I'm looking for a people that will enter into my rest, that will receive this salvation that I've given so free. And this verse says, we just read that the word of God knows what we believe or what we don't believe. Or we, if we're believers or unbelievers. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. So, we're not left here hanging on our own. Verse 14 says, Since so then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven. Read it with me. Who? Jesus, Jesus the Son of God. Last part. Let us hold firmly to what we believe. These Hebrews were living amongst other Jews and amongst, amongst pagans. And they were being told to 
come off with the truth. But this is what God has given us because we have a high priest. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find what? Grace. grace to help us when we need it most. What is grace? Undeserved merit. Undes undeserved merit. Mm -hmm. And some people have said grace is G, G God's... Oh... Yeah, God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. So we can have this grace. We can live, live boldly. We can come boldly before the throne of God and we can receive this grace because we have the high priest and he's asking us to believe. And guess what? That's the last scripture in Hebrews chapter 4. That's what I want to share with you today. So, we usually have a prayer, and then we have a benediction. So, I'll have the prayer now. And we'll sing our song, and we'll have a benediction. Come on up, Bob. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we want to thank you for what you've revealed to us in the book of Hebrews, especially this fourth chapter, that you have richly given us grace, and you have richly provided us our high priest that is ministering in the heavenly sanctuary for us even now, that you've told us to come boldly before your throne, that you have given us the grace to believe and gifts of faith that we might believe what Jesus has done for us. And so we also ask, Lord, by the power of the name of Jesus, that you would grant every heart here that gift of faith, the faith of Jesus, so we may enter into that rest so that even our work feels like Relaxation feels like fun, feels wonderful, and it's coming from our heart to love for you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn number is 412, if you please enter that one. And it's called Cover with His Life. Mm -hmm. 